Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for Greninja or Lucario from Pokemon, and like and subscribe for more agency next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Kyrie, the final member of the Destiny Islands trio, and definitely the final member to get to do anything in the story. She just had to wait 19 years and die. Good news though, we still have a primary antagonist to defeat. Oh, what? Sorry? Oh, we don't. She got good at fighting right before the bad guy died. That's rough. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need healing magic. You're the third member of the group, and the third members always heal and die for the plot. You should start a union with Shion and Ventus. Next, we need some elemental magic. You might be the most spell-focused Keyblade wielder in the series, so we'll go for the biggest spells. Finally, we still need skills with a sword, especially when we've got the power of friendship with us. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just watch your multi-classing minimums. Charisma will be number one. Everyone loves Kyrie, and you need friends to have the power of friendship. Dexterity next, when you finally do get to fight, you're pretty fast with nimble hops and dodges. Wisdom after that, if you're going to be bringing the heals, it would be nice to have some medicinal skills. Follow that up with intelligence, you do train with Lee in the hyperbolic time chamber, and compared to Sora, you're a genius. Constant Constitution is a bit low, you don't take a lot of hits, and will dump strength. You tend to get kidnapped a lot, that means you're not winning grapple checks. Most of the Keyblade wielders are human, but you're a princess of heart, which means you got a little more light, so I'm gonna go for Protector Asimar. That'll give you plus two charisma and plus one wisdom, 60 feet of dark vision, celestial resistance to resist necrotic and radiant damage, the light cantrip to be the light in Sora's heart that never goes out, and to make light in a 10 foot radius. Healing Hands gives you a pool of healing equal to your total level that you can distribute as an action for a little free healing. Healing. Build your own background. For acrobatics and medicine proficiency, it's always easier to administer pharmaceuticals when you do a backflip first. We'll kick things off as a sorcerer for two skills from the sorcerer list like persuasion and insight to better know how your friends are feeling and to talk them out of some of their worst ideas. You're the brains of the operation with a plus one intelligence modifier. Yikes. Specifically, we're going to be a Holy Soli, or a Divine Soul Sorcerer for more radiance and healing with our elemental magic. You're favored by the gods, giving you 2d4 to add to a failed saving throw or attack roll once per short rest. You can even use it on death saving throws, but that doesn't guarantee you'll succeed, though. We're mostly here for spells and cantrips. Firebolt is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d10 fire damage. Ray of Frost is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d8 cold damage and slows the target down by 10 feet. Shocking Grasp is a melee spell attack that deals 1d8 lightning damage and prevents the target from taking a reaction to stop the baddies from chasing you. And spare the dying stops a creature from rolling death saving throws, maybe this time you'll be the one to save Sora. Probably not. For your first level spells, Cure Wounds heals 1d8 plus your Charisma modifier as an action to a creature you touch, it's the most basic healing you can get. Shield makes a little barrier that adds 5 to your AC as a reaction that should help you stay alive since the only fight you're in is the final boss fight of the trilogy. Second level Sorcerers get a Font of Magic, giving you a pool of sorcery to recover spell slots and do some other stuff later, I'm not gonna spoil it. Like I did with Kyrie dying, I kinda kick the video off with that. For this little spell, Mage Armor makes your AC 13 plus your Dexterity modifier for 8 hours. It's just a little unarmored defense since you're mostly tanking hits with magic. Third level sorcerers get meta magic to augment your spells with sorcery points. Quicken spell lets you cast a spell as a bonus action that normally takes an action, helping you get your healing going faster. Heightened spell lets you give a creature disadvantage on saving throws on a spell you're casting. You're fighting a dude who's like 13 people. He's probably pretty good at saving throws. For this level spell, magic weapon gives you a keyblade, making a weapon magical in terms of overcoming resistances and adding one to the attack and damage rolls with that weapon for an hour depending on your concentration you're just gonna have to wait a few years to actually use it but as an asimar you will be able to use it with your radiant soul meaning that you'll have a flying speed you can add your level and radiant damage to one attack per round for a minute which could make you fight pretty good if you had any weapon proficiencies you don't yet so actually, really quick, fighter level 1, weapon proficiency and a fighting style, dueling adds 2 to your damage with one-handed weapons, and second wind heals 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action to yourself, it's cure but just for yourself. It's fine. Sorcerer level 20 is terrible, this is just as useful. Fourth level sorcerers get an ability score improvement, bump that charisma modifier up, it's a shame we can't cap it off, but we'll get there, don't sweat it. For this level spell, scorching ray is some rapid fire fire. You shoot 3 balls of fire that deal 2d6 fire damage each, you can aim them at one Xehanort or multiple Norts as Zayhan. That's the plural of Zayhanort, it's like attorney's general. Fifth level sorcerers get third level spells. All of my favorites are here, including Lightning Bolt, which will step up your thunder for a 100 foot line of dexterity saving throws and 8d6 lightning damage to those that fail, have as much to those that succeed. It's shocking how good you are at casting in your first fight. 
Six level holy solis get empowered healing, letting you spend a sorcery point to give a buddy within five feet of you a chance to reroll one healing die. I keep saying buddy, but it's just Sora or Lee. Those are the two people you've fought next to. But if you do find more friends, mass healing word heals up to six creatures, a d4 plus your charisma modifier as a bonus action. So Sora... Protosora, Post Sora, Trans Clone Sora, Data Sora, and Dinosora all get a little bit of health. I'm upset that Dinosaur is the fake one. Dinosaur is an underrated Disney movie. Seventh level sorcerers get fourth level spells. Ice Storm forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 20 foot radius, 40 foot high cylinder, dealing 4d6 cold damage and 2d8 bludgeoning damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. It's always important to continue the Blizzaga saga. 8th level sorcerers get another ability score improvement or a feat. Let's grab the resilient feat for dexterity, adding 1 to your score and giving you proficiency with saving throws so nobody can turn you to stone. Wait, flush to stone isn't a dex save? Whoops. Fireball is a deck safe in a 20 foot radius sphere, dealing 8d6 fire damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed, which will account for our Fyraza. Then level sorcerers get 5th level spells, greater restoration removes charming petrification, reduction in ability scores, reduction in HP, or a curse, helping you bring Sora back from being a heartless. Wait, does this mean that Kairu was level 9 in Kingdom Hearts 1? Maybe Sora should have her come back to Hollow Bastion at the end. She could have been very helpful. 10th level sorcerers get another meta magic option. Distant spell lets you double the range of a spell, making sure that your healing is always reaching your friends. For this level spell, Holy Weapon lets you add 2d8 radiant damage to a weapon for an hour, and even dismiss that with a finish command that forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 30 foot radius, dealing 4d8 radiant damage to those that fail and blinding them for a minute. Honestly, I think you should get the most out of that 2d8 radiant damage first. You don't really attack all that fast. 11th level sorcerers get 6th level spells, and heal is a really good healing spell. It heals 70 HP worth of health immediately to a creature of your choice, and removes any blindness, deafness, or diseases on the creature, but mostly 70 HP. That's just a big old good old fashioned healing spell. 12th level sorcerers get another ability score improvement, round up your dexterity, and cap off your charisma modifier. Sorcerers don't get another spell at this level. I think a lot of people count this as a negative, and it's obviously worse than getting more spells, but honestly, I think most casters pick about 5 spells they like and just use those. It's not a huge deal, and it helps me make the video shorter. So I appreciate it. Thanks, Sorcerer. 13th level Sorcerers can learn 7th level spells, but I don't really need any for you. I'd rather just scoop up Tasha's otherworldly guys for a 40-foot flying speed, plus 2 to your AC, 2 attacks per round, the ability to use your casting modifier for your weapon attacks, make them magical, and give you immunity to fire and poison damage as well as the poison condition, or immunity to radiant and necrotic and the charmed condition. It basically turns the damsel in distress into the damsel in control of her own fate and destiny. 14th level holy solis get a third method of flight from otherworldly wings, letting you summon wings at will for 30 feet of flying speed. The wings are just flavor though. Use this for straight up anime levels of mobility you'll need to fight in the Keyblade graveyard. 15th level sorcerers get 8th level spells. Sunburst creates a 60 foot radius sphere of light that forces a constitution saving throw on creatures inside, dealing 12d6 radiant damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. It also blinds them for a minute, basically letting you drop a spirit bomb. Maybe that's why Kyrie didn't get to do anything for so long, she was just charging up. 16th level sorcerers get another ability score improvement, keep pushing your dexterity higher for better AC so you can dodge a little bit better. You don't really have enough health to take a hit well. 17th level sorcerers can learn 9th level spells, and if you use all of your focus, you can call down a meteor swarm, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures in 4 40 foot radius spheres, dealing 20 d6 fire and 20 d6 bludgeoning damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. I'm guessing this is probably why we don't have Dinosaura. That makes sense. 18th level soul sorcerers get another self curaga with unearthly recovery, letting you heal half your HP as a bonus action once per long rest when you have less than half your HP. Good news. Your HP is so small, you're going to be able to use this so fast. Wait, is that good or bad? Our capstone is the 19th level of Sorcerer for one last ability score improvement and a capped off dexterity score for 18 AC with Mage Armor, 20 AC with the Otherworldly Guys or Haste, and up to 25 with your Shield Barrier. That sounds pretty good, but now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how good this build is. First, healing is good. It's so good. It's so very good for your team to not die. It's just very good to heal. It's also good to use Meteor Swarms to absolutely destroy the bad guys, as well as your other giant spells like Sunburst and Fireball. Finally, flying is awesome. You're super mobile and can go wherever you need to, but you'll probably need to go away because you have less than 90 HP total, so you're going to die. You also have a low strength score, so if someone can grapple you, you can't fly away. That means you're going to die. Finally, flying is dangerous with low health because hitting the ground is going to deal damage, which is an automatic fail 
failed death save, you're gonna die. But your friends will always save you, even from death. So keep them healthy, explode the baddies with giant magic, and make sure that you're staying out of the enemy's range. Just don't fly too high, otherwise you could end up stoned. Thanks for watching, if you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for Greninja or Lucario, and sub to Tulak and Mango to watch us play some Kingdom Hearts. Not the third one yet, we're still on Kingdom Hearts 2. Okay, bye bye.